listening to the Becoming More Me podcast with me, Teresa Lear Levine. You're already enough, but if you're anything like me, you thrive when you're stretching and developing yourself, creating more of the person you feel called to be. This podcast is here to inspire and support you. Let's release the negative, reinforce the positive, and elevate our vibe together as we tap into our limitless potential to transform and grow. Well, hello there. We are sailing into February, aren't we? Ah, I have been doing a lot of episode recording with guests lately. And I got up this morning and I felt like, man, I really miss just talking with you guys one-on-one and recording an episode that's just us love guests as I do. And I will have plenty more. Don't worry. But there's just, there's a difference in a scheduled time that you're going to have a conversation with someone that has perhaps a little bit more structure to it. And for me, when I do the episodes that I record solo, I do them when I feel inspired to record them. So for instance, this morning, I wasn't necessarily saying that this was a number one priority for my day to record this episode, but I felt like I really wanted to do it. And I also felt inspired by certain things. So it was just the right time. So there's just a little bit of a different energy that gets brought to either kind of episode. And ah, I got, I just, I find that to be really cool. So today I want to talk about how and why personal development style learning is so hard for us to put into action, essentially why it's failing us and why when we know better, we have such a hard time doing better because that was one of the reasons why when I came across emotional freedom techniques and it began working so well for me, I knew I had to pursue it further because if you know me at all, you know, I am an information junkie. I am an audible book junkie. I am a personal development junkie. I love information and I love acquiring it and being knowledgeable and understanding things and understanding why things are the way they are, how they work. Just, I love all of that, but information for the sake of just information and knowledge doesn't inspire action and it doesn't change outcomes or results. So we can be, you know, taking in all the things and really be in agreement, you know, passionately with things that we are learning, you know, yes, mm -hmm, I get it. That is exactly it. I'm onto it. That's what I needed. Okay. And then nothing changes for us. And that is where I think so many people get super duper frustrated because especially in my line of work. So the people that I have been working with mainly, at least in the last year iteration of my business have been people that either want to get into some kind of coaching life coaching or otherwise, career coaching, et cetera, or are looking to change careers entirely, people that are already coaching. So people with an interest in in helping others through service-based coaching of some sort. And oftentimes when you're in that kind of a, a business, and I've talked about this in other episodes, the whole like coaches need coaches, but we have to get our ego out of it because when we have spent so much time doing so much work on ourselves and with others, and we know how things are supposed to go, we feel like when they're not going that way for us, that we've done something like terribly wrong. Something's really gone askew. And I always applaud people that, you know, come to me for coaching or help getting through their blocks Because I know, especially when I'm working with, you know, six and seven figure mom entrepreneurs that already are so incredibly intelligent and have so much basis for knowing at least why they should be able to change things. 
to be able to seek out help because they're having oftentimes very similar problems themselves that they help other people get through really takes a level of courage and bravery that a lot of people are not willing to step into. And I think that is so very awesome. But what I've found is that when people are in that stuck place, even when they know so much about how or why they shouldn't be, they're usually missing the nervous system regulation and the chakra part of the work where you're really working on clearing out the energy centers and working through those things that have become blocked in there and not allowed you to get where you want to go with your business, with your family, with whatever goals you're just stuck with. So I think it's really important to honor all the work that anybody has ever done because it's not for not it's served a purpose. It was what you needed at the time and it got you to where you needed to be and whatever kind of help coaching or therapy is next for you because personal development is always a journey. And of course we want stuff that's going to be effective and efficient and actually produce results. All the stuff that we've learned is important though. Even if it didn't get us the results that we wanted, we, we learned it at the time that we did for a reason. I do truly believe that. And I feel like that's important to honor as somebody who has, you know, hundreds and hundreds of books read in my audible collection and even more on my bookshelf and tons on my wish list of to read. I know that acquiring knowledge is something I enjoy. And I now have the tools to turn that knowledge into action, which makes learning even more fun for me because it can be really, really defeating to think that you have spent tons of your you know, most precious asset, your time, not to mention tons of money and really invested in trying to understand and get ahead with certain knowledge only to have it not perform for you. And I think that one of the big aha moments is understanding that our mind, our brain is not our healer and that we can't learn and think our way out of things in order to make the breakthroughs that we really want to make and get unstuck. We can't just think more and figure it out. And our brain is not going to get us out of procrastination and into a place of courageous action. It's not something that you can learn. It's an energy. And it's not the brain's job to hold that energy. I hope that makes sense and is landing with you because that was huge for me because for so many years, it felt like if I'm so damn smart, then why am I not able to figure this out? Or why am I not making X amount of money? Or why am I not succeeding in this certain way? And I was trying to think my way through it. And I needed to energetically unblock and work my th way through it that way. And it's also in alignment with that feeling that things have to be hard when we do them. And when you get in the right energetic state and unblocked from the things that are energetically blocking you, it's easy. And for a lot of people, there's a feeling of not deserving that ease, even though for me, I know that ease is all I ever wanted. Just, you know, make it easy to deliver the things that are in my genius zone, the things that I am really talented at doing. Just let that be easy so that I can live in the joy of what I do best instead of in the struggle of that which does not come easy for me. And 
man, the leaps and strides that I've made there. That's a different episode. But understanding that the mind is not the healer is really, really big in beginning to make better progress with the information that you collect. And then understanding that also because personal development is putting the focus on what we think, that for that very reason that our mind is not the healer, we're not getting past that like Yahoo inspired energy of when we learn it into inspired action and flow with it. So, you know, learning strategies, having accountability, being inspired, none of those things are enough to transform your energy up through all of those, you know, blocked chakras and to manifest in life what it is that you really want. So again, it puts you in that feeling of being defeated and wondering why things aren't working for you. So, you know, it's like, you can learn all day about, you can even just, you can learn about energy and energetic blockages, but not clear them. You can learn about forgiveness, but not forgive. You can take in all of these beautiful concepts that are presented in so many ways to us that we have at our fingertips, you know, love and vulnerability and bravery and, personal power and all sorts of things you can learn about, but it doesn't make it happen for you. So even if you were to read and understand emotional freedom techniques, if you don't do it, it's not going to help you change your life or get a different outcome. You can understand it logically inside and out, but you have to actually do it. And EFT is the only technique that I have found so far that actually helps me want to do more of the things that I have to do to get the outcomes I want to have that so for so long, I would procrastinate on because it's hard to make yourself do things that you don't want to do or things that are making you feel like, Ooh, this might not be safe, even if it's good for you. You know, there's something about it that might change your life in a way that feels so uncertain and unsafe that it's easier to live in the pain than to walk into the uncertainty. And doing tapping is the only thing that has ever gotten me to get out of that stagnation and to really feel grounded and secure in the decisions that I make. Because let's face it, being an entrepreneur is scary. (laughs) And even though nothing in life is is certain, it can feel really uncertain when you are starting out as an entrepreneur and working for yourself and trying to figure out all the things. There are a lot of lower chakra issues that you're going to come up against. And that's where this is beautiful. So when you do this work, the next aha moment that you're going to have is that the actual roots of what is causing the problem are often different than you think. And when you get to the roots, that's when you get to understand why things have been the way that they have. And that's when you really get to understand yourself better and find the compassion, that openness from the heart chakra, where you can be compassionate for yourself instead of a critic to all the things that have gone wrong previously and really, really understand why it's been difficult for you to shine your light in the way that you want to, or why your anxiety has been so high, why you've had so much self-doubt and really, really make sense of things so much more and stop beating yourself up which is huge, 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 because you'll realize that in those times that things weren't working out, you were not empowered with the power to do things in the way that you wished you could have. 
Thanks so much for listening. If you loved this episode, please share it with a friend or post on social media and tag me so I can personally connect and thank you. Until next time, keep taking bold and brave action steps towards becoming more of who you want to be in this world. You are capable, you are worthy, and you are enough. Keep shining your light.